What's up guys, it's Dollmatter here, and today we're going to be reacting to a new channel. This one is Kirioth TV, and the video is Warhammer 40k versus Star Wars slash Star Trek. Who would win the horror of the Imperium? So, I would consider myself a kind of casual Star Wars fan, and not really a fan of Star Trek at all. Um, I've, I've, I've seen like a bunch of the movies and the old TV show, my dad used to watch it all the time when I was growing up, but I've, I never really got into Star Trek. Star Wars... The movies are kind of meh. I'm mean, all of them, even the original trilogy and this and the prequel trilogy. It's all kind of meh. Um, and the games, the games are hit or miss. Some of them are really, really good. Some of them are kind of okay, and some of them are absolute trash. So it's, I'd say I'm kind of a casual Star Wars fan and just not a fan of Star Trek at all. Um, so with, with Star Trek, I think it's undeniable. The Warhammer 40k universe is just leagues and leagues more powerful. Star Wars. Then you get into, like, all the kind of, like, Jedi space magic shit, which, you know, I guess it would be, like, what do you think is more powerful? Like, a very powerful Psyker or, like, a fucking Jedi, uh, you know, a very powerful Jedi or Sith. Um, as far as technology goes, they kind of seem to be on, like, similar playing fields, right? They're both kind of in, like, a dark age, at least in, you know, what we, I guess we could call the current era throughout the movies, right? Like, the technology used to be a lot better throughout the Star Wars universe, uh, some of it still exists. Like, I remember the one book I was reading. They go to this one planet. This is, I can't remember the name of the book, but it was based right after the original trilogy. And Luke goes to this one planet that used to be um, an old Republic world. And they find, like, the, basically this horde of, like, old artifacts. And they start, like, developing technologies from it and all that stuff. And it's really interesting. So, um, but anyway, I'm interested to see what his take on this was. Is I'm assuming judging by the title that he's probably going to be pro 40k which is probably the way i would lean to uh but anyway link to the original video down below this is warhammer 40k versus star wars and star trek who would win the horror of the imperium by kirioth tv and let's jump into it oh my name is kirioth and today we are going to have another little chat about the whole Warhammer 40k versus just all the universes <laughs> all of the other things i've fallen down the rabbit hole again uh reading things i've already read watching videos i've already watched talking about things like the imperium versus the galactic empire and the federation and so on and so forth and we've talked about this once before which was kind of a blanket statement of there's a reason that a lot of these these comparisons end up the way they do which is that 40k is stupid now i say that as a lifelong fan of 40k i love 40k but it's really dumb. It's one of the things I really like about it. I never try and pretend that it is somehow superior to everything else because of how daft and over the top it is. Rather, that is a quality that I can appreciate whilst acknowledging that's very silly. Um, I mean, the main the, the main focus of the universe is like eight foot tall, super genetically engineered super soldiers who wear suits of armor that make them faster than they already were, even though they were already faster than the average human. But I mean, yeah, I mean, Halo has the same thing. Halo is one of the most popular franchises ever, especially the original trilogy. It gets very silly. That's one of the things that makes it great. Something that is not covered a huge amount, though, in especially like Imperium versus um, topics and questions is the kind of psychological aspect of the Imperium, which I think is one of the most interesting things about the 40k universe. Yes, Blood for the Blood God is all very good, you know, getting overrun by hordes of demons, hilarious, fantastic, the inability to have uh, FTL that doesn't involve dipping yourself into a literal hell dimension, where there's a chance you could get where you want to go in reasonable time, or you could get there 10 years before you left, or you might get there 100 years into the future, uh, or your entire crew is eaten and their souls consumed by demons. Really, anything could happen, which makes it terrible, really, for trying to get anywhere, but there you go. <laughs> but the actual... Yeah, honestly, it seems like they should probably spend more time trying to develop a webway, but I guess they probably don't even know about it. Um, how much knowledge does the average person in the Imperium have of the webway? Or, like, the average high-ranking official, I guess I could say. The actual kind of attitude of the Imperium and the people who serve in it it's one of those things that I think would have more of an impact on those matchups than most people give it credit for. A lot of it is very clinical. A lot of it is kind of numbers based. It's, okay, well the Boltry is as powerful as this weapon, or the ship is as powerful as this ship, or that is faster than that, and so in that kind of space engagement, like the Empire would win because they're more maneuverable, so on and so forth. There is an aspect of the Imperium, though, that I think can't be overlooked when it comes to fighting... really fighting 
any other empire or organization that uses sentient, free-thinking creatures. I mean, even like the Galactic Empire, you can still identify stormtroopers as being inherently human, uh, because they are. The absolute, complete difference in mindsets between the different factions of these matchups, I think is something that is understated. See, I don't know a vast amount, I'll be honest, about things like Star Trek and Star Wars. I watch them, I enjoy them, I don't do like deep dives into the lore or anything like that. But, but, I'm assuming that should, for instance, let's take the Federation as an example. Should the Federation send a fleet of 50 ships into a system and all 50 of those ships are destroyed and the people on them killed that i am making a guess making an assumption here that would be a problem that would be a kind of a big deal that would yeah i I would assume so too just because you see this with like a lot of democracies right democracies in general are a lot less willing to take uh casualties in war than dictatorships or monarchies or whatever um so yeah i would imagine like a kind of theocratic system like you've got with you know the imperium of man would be willing to take a lot more casualties than you know a federation or the old republic or whatever um over the empire i feel like the empire would probably be fine with that right they just send more clones or more droids or whatever be a oh shit moment a what the hell was that we need to find out what's going on this is this is really bad probably the same for the empire i'd imagine losing like losing like a hundred thousand two hundred thousand half a million troops in a ground engagement would be a real problem i that i don't agree with right because you have to look at like the, the sith very much view things as like just power for the sake of power um now and also like the, the kind of you like clones and droids and all that stuff is to disposable like vader literally walks around fucking force choking his own guys it's you know you're not talking about like the most i definitely think with like the republic and the federation and all of this shit you definitely have a point right but when you when you're talking about the empire i think the empire is more than willing to lose those soldiers to just use them as cannon fodder um now the problem with when it comes to the empire is they have a lot less space magicians right they've only got two right the rule of two so that becomes the big issue, I think, when you're talking about the Empire. But as far as, like, willingness to lose men, I think the Empire is more than willing to lose them. But then I guess the big issue is, you know, the numbers game. I'm not sure how many people the Empire has as compared to, the, you know, the Imperium of Man, which has trillions. That does not apply to the Imperium in the slightest, because the Imperium is so completely geared towards war and fanaticism that losing 50 ships is kind of regrettable but at least now we know that we need to send at least another 100 over there to make sure that we can kill whatever's there and then if you lose those you just send some more and then some more and then some more similarly in a ground engagement you can lose literally millions of imperial guard before someone will go you know what i don't think this specific tactic of just throwing waves of lives at the enemy and having them cut down is working on this occasion so what we should do is probably summon the super soldiers and they'll deal with it there is a complete lack of regard a complete callousness when it comes to the value of life and fighting experience in the Imperium, that I feel like there would be some sort of reaction, a negative reaction from any foe they faced that has any value on the people that they are sending to fight for them. So, again, I agree when he's talking about the Republic and the Federation and stuff, but when he's talking about the Empire, I, I don't think that would be an issue for them. I mean, like, you're talking about people who, like, walk around, you know, again, force choking their own employees because they, like, slightly pissed them off. Um, they're mostly clones. They view them as dispendable. They, 
they started a civil war, they killed all the younglings. Like, you're not exactly talking about, like, you know, when you're talking about the Empire, you're not exactly talking about, like, the greatest humans in terms of their moral compass to ever live. Um, no, I think the big problem when it comes to the Empire is they're just not going to have the quality of soldier that you need to compete with, you know, like Space Marines and shit like that, because they, you know, there's only two people able to use the Force, right? Or at least, you know, trained in the ability to use the Force because of the rule of two. But the the actual, like, you know, being willing to sacrifice units, I don't think is an issue for the Empire. Federation and Republic, yes. Empire, no. Whether it be a value in terms of you know, respecting like the person themselves, or whether it's just a case of we cannot afford to lose this number of people because it will leave us weakened. The Imperium has almost no regard for any of that at all. One of their most successful and often used tactics when it comes to taking hostile ground is simply attrition. It's not, okay, we have... A finite number of people. We need to make sure that this push is the last push. It needs to be pulled off flawlessly. There is a surprising lack of that going on in a lot of engagements. In a lot of engagements, it's a case of, all right, well, I mean, we lost a million, but we've got like six more. So just keep marching forwards and eventually they'll probably break through. That kind of, frankly, awful approach to sentient life it's something that I think can't be understated when fighting another force that has something like morale to consider. Because that's basically what it boils down to, isn't it? Morale is a massive part of any battle. You know, if you start losing people, not because they're fighting, but because they're running away, that causes incredibly serious issues with the other forces that you have fighting. If they see squads breaking and running, that has a negative impact overall and can turn the tide because suddenly half your army is fucking off in the other direction. The Imperium has almost no issue with that. In terms of just sheer standing there and taking the punishment, the Imperium is basically the best because even their most kind of shittily equipped garbage soldiers are essentially going into every battle not really expecting to survive anyway. They rely heavily on conscription and they rely heavily on upkeep of morale, not through encouragement or through nurture or anything like that. It is literally a case of you see someone run. An Imperial Guardsman finally cannot take the assault. They've been, you know, they've been sent against a force of stormtroopers. The stormtroopers embedded, they're in a fantastic position. Guardsmen are dying left and right. One of them breaks. They break, they throw down the last gun, they turn around, they run off. And they immediately get shot in the head by a commissar. Now, you see, the commissar's job is there to provide encouragement to the masses, to ensure that the troops do not lose their spirit, that they keep fighting regardless. And they do this by literally standing there and shooting anyone who tries to run away. The message is pretty clear. You either keep fighting, and there's a chance you'll survive, or you run away, and I'll fucking kill you, and you will definitely be dead. That is an approach to morale that is, let's face it, almost inhumanly cold. <laughs> like, that is real. So, I, I, I agree, but I think the big problem is, like, this is not... It's not as unique to Warhammer as he's trying to make it out to be. I mean, this is something that happened in real life in World War II with the Soviets, right? Um, of which Star Wars was loosely based on, right? The Empire versus the Republic. Not entirely, but, you know, that's partly where George Lucas pulled it from. Um, and when it comes to the Sith, like, they're not worried about killing their own people. Um, now, again, I think the big issue when it comes to this, you know, I think he's 100% right here when it comes to, like, the Federation and the Republic. But when he's talking about the Sith and, like, the Empire and stuff like that, then you the, – the bigger issue in my mind is lack of people of, of able to compete with fucking Space Marines, right? Because realistically, you've got two Jedi or Sith or whatever the fuck, 
right? You've got two people able to wield the force efficiently. And everyone else is either not trained in the force or has no ability to use the force, right? Um, that, I think, is the biggest issue when it comes to Star Wars specifically, is that he's right 100% about the morale issues when it comes to the, you know, the Federation and the Republic. But when it comes to, yeah, again, the Empire, I think the bigger issue is just the lack of, like, troops good enough to deal with them. They don't have an army of Jedi like the fucking Federation Republic does. And I can't help but wonder in these kind of imaginary matchups and in these imaginary battles whereby you've got stormtroopers fighting guardsmen or whatever, if a squad of even like battle hardened enemies saw that happen to an Imperial guardsman, would their first reaction be, oh, okay, that's cool? Probably not, right? Probably not. They probably wouldn't look at that and go, seems reasonable, there would probably be at least a mild amount of unease. The seed of doubt that how... Okay, if we can't... If we literally have to kill every last one of them, that's... I, I don't want to be involved in that. Like, there's got to be some seed in there that would see something like that and feel scared. Not necessarily of death or of failure, but of an enemy that has so little regard for their own lives, that has so little regard for the lives of their troops, that they are willing to just outright kill them themselves to prevent them from running away. That doesn't even kind of... Like, that's only one part of it as well. There is also the kind of psychological aspect of things like Space Marines. Something that's really well covered in the Horus Heresy series for 40k is the reaction to standard humans to the work of the Space Marines. See, when we're talking like a firefight, a pitched battle where it is... I think that... I don't think the psychological thing would be an issue. I mean, like, probably the size of them would be, you know, obviously pretty intimidating. Um, but you're talking about people who are used to Jedi. Now, again, in Star Trek, I 100% agree that'll be a major factor. But when you're talking about Star Wars... They're used to Jedi, right? They're used to these fucking incredible space knights. I guess you call like space knight wizards, whatever. Um, they're obviously just normal sized people, though. So like the the combat abilities they would be used to, I think it's just the sheer size that would impress them. And then the other thing is the numbers, right? Because if you're talking about the Sith, there's only two. If you're talking about the Jedi, there's maybe a couple hundred, maybe a couple thousand. Right? There's not, like, hundreds of thousands of them like there are with the Space Marines. Right? Like, all these chapters of a thousand Space Marines. It's, yeah. Imperial Guardsmen versus, I don't know, Federation troops, Empire troops, Stormtroopers, whatever. That is a ranged fight for the most part. That is, you know, standing at a distance, finding cover, exchanging fire. And it's what you could probably class as standard warfare, I would guess. Not exactly non-traumatic, but but par for the course, that kind of engagement. The impact of a Space Marine is not just in terms of how many people he can kill before he goes down. The impact of a Space Marine needs to also be considered in the weapons that they use and the method by which they wage war. Now, an Imperial Guard regiment is not going to drop from the sky, for instance, in a big metal tube run down a ramp and start cutting people in half vertically as a method of killing. That's not how they work. They are, you know, they're a force that entrenches themselves or advances slowly into fire, taking massive casualties. That's pretty much how the Imperial Guard go. The absolute terror aspect of suddenly finding that there are, for instance, five assault marines dropping in your midst with swords that are also chainsaws that just rip chunks of flesh from you until you're dead is also something that I think cannot be understated if you are used to a certain type of fight if you're used to a certain kind of battle yeah, finding someone with a lightsaber is probably not much fun but seeing people get disemboweled and dismembered and in a lot of cases not even messily killed just messily left in a position where they will die, that's got to have a massive impact as well. So, with this I kind of disagree too. Now, obviously you don't really see this, especially in the movies, 
Um, some of the games get a bit more dark. Uh, I guess the one time you do kind of see it in the movie is with Anakin, uh, when Obi-Wan fucks him up and cuts off his legs. But, I mean, yeah, like, the, the, the fucking lightsaber is perfectly capable. The lightsaber is mo- much more effective, actually, than, you know, a, a chainsaw sword. Uh, so, yeah, this, I, I, I don't really agree with this part. Again, I think the big issue is just always going to be a numbers game when it comes to Warhammer, right? The, the Jedi aren't going to be willing to lose as many people, and the 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 Empire just doesn't have the people, right? I think that's going to be the two biggest issues. Right? One's not willing to lose it, one's not willing to... One just doesn't have it. I think those will be the biggest issues. But as far as, like, you know, war is war. It's like, oh yeah, our war is more gruesome than your war is kind of dumb. Right, it's yeah. That has to. The way I cut a guy's stomach out is more gruesome than the way you got you cut a guy's stomach out. To cause serious issues for morale, if you are fighting as a like a group of pretty standard people, it takes a lot of psychological conditioning to be able to withstand the kind of visual and mental on- onslaught of, for instance a guy in armor with a sword the same size that he is merrily chopping the legs off all of your friends because they'll die slower that way and that seems very hyperbolic that's also completely reasonable for the flesh terrors for example the flesh terrors are not nice they are psychopathic murderers in armor with weapons that can take bits of you off and then they will leave you there you will like you just lie there and bleed out, and everyone around you gets to watch that happen. All these different like matchups and all these different kind of battle scenarios are really interesting and they're really fun to think about, and they're honestly really fun to hear about, especially from people who are knowledgeable in you know the various universes that these often take place. I mean, as I say, for me the most the ones that I see the most are like Star Trek or Star Wars, it's usually like. Imperium versus Empire, that kind of that kind of thing. But there is that aspect of just the horror aspect. There's always a horror element to war. Yeah, exactly. The PTSD isn't a fictional. Yeah, that's the thing. I, like, I think I think with Star Trek, it's just undeniable that the fucking you know just the scale of Warhammer is so much bigger than anything in Star Trek. At least anything that I've seen. Maybe somebody that's more well versed in Star Trek can correct me on that. When it comes to Star Wars, um, I think that, again, like I was saying before, I think the biggest issue is when it comes to the the you know like the, the Republic. They're not just, they're just not going to be willing to lose the amount of troops that they need to in order to compete with the Imperium of Man. And when it comes to the Empire, they just don't have the amount of jet or I keep saying Jedi. They don't have the amount of Sith, right? Like the amount of like super fucking magic soldiers uh, with you know light swords that they need to compete with the Space Marines, right? The Jedi, I don't even know if there's enough Jedi to compete with them, but I feel like that's, like, a secondary issue. Um, they definitely have more than the Sith do, though, right? Like, the Sith, there's always, it's the rule of two. There's two, sometimes maybe three if somebody else takes on an apprentice, like the lower, the apprentice takes on an apprentice happens sometimes, but usually there's just two. Well, thing. But 40K is essentially built on, I guess what you could probably class as body horror. There is so much in the way of horrendous, grievous, horrific injuries. There are weapons that, for the most part, aren't used because they're too barbaric. Like, flamethrowers are still pretty regular fare in Warhammer 40k. They are they are standard weaponry. There is a flamer in most, you know, it, well, not most Space Marine squads, but they're not uncommon. The Imperial Guard has access to them as well. Bolters, by their very nature, are horrendous weapons. I mean, <laughs> oh man, flamethrowers are literally used in real warfare today, right? Like that's uh, the idea that like another group of people wouldn't be willing to use them. I find kind of ridiculous. Um, okay, and if you have the the sheer misfortune to not be killed by a shot from a bolter. I mean, say you get hit in the hip, you're going to die anyway. But the person next to you just got to watch part of your lower half explode and you scream on the floor for ages. 
there is a psychological aspect of the way the Imperium wages war that is just incredibly awful <laughs> because they don't care about their own men. They will shoot their own soldiers. They will drive millions of their own soldiers into hostile territory, into hostile lines, not because it's the most efficient way to do it, but because they can. Because for every 50 people that get killed, there are 500 more who are waiting to die just behind them. Space Marines are kind of, in the Imperium, presented as heroes. You know, they are the angels of the Emperor. They, they're there to protect you. Unfortunately, what that means for the enemy is you'll be dismembered and disemboweled. You'll be punched to death by a giant lightning-covered fist. You'll be hit with massive hammers. You'll have an actual chainsaw carved through you. In the Imperium, in 40k, that doesn't really make that much of a difference. It's horrific, yeah, but it's it's everyday horrific. It's something that, by the nature of that universe, people kind of expect in a horrible way. I mean, the fact that they do kind of expect it really says it all about the universe itself, doesn't it? But how how does like a Federation soldier react to seeing his friend getting carved up the centre by a chainsaw? How does a stormtrooper respond to someone picking up someone he's known for the last five years and just snapping them in half? Because that's what space marines do. And it's really horrible. <laughs> but the thing is, when it's insulated, when it's isolated to 40k, it's just like, yeah, that's over the top and stupid. It's only when you kind of compare it to other popular sci-fi, you know, safe. So I, I, the thing is, a lot of like some of that stuff is over the top and stupid. Some of it's just aggressively realistic, right? Like cutting an enemy in half is just it's it's not over the top. Well, I guess it depends on how it's done, right? But that's not over the top. That's just the realistic horrors of war, right? Um, I, now, when it comes to, like, Star Trek and Star Wars, like, Star Trek obviously had to be made for TV, so it has to have, like, a... There's, like... It's, and it was made for TV, like, back in, like, the 50s or 60s originally. So there was, like, a very limited amount of gore. You had to have... It was it had to be, like, very politically correct in order to be on TV. And on top of that, the message they're trying to send is, like, a very pro-futuristic, progressive message um, where there's, like, very little war and very little conflict and stuff like that, right? Um... So obviously it doesn't delve too much into that. And then with Star Wars, you're talking about movies that were literally made for kids, right? Like George Lucas famously mocked uh, a lot of the adults that were mad about the prequels saying, oh, you guys didn't like kids' movies? Well, maybe, you know, take your kids to it. They'll probably like it. Um, paraphrasing there. But he basically said, you know, if you're a grown adult whining about the prequels, then you, you have bigger problems than the fact that you didn't like the prequels. Um, and... So you have you have one set that was made for TV back in like the fifties or sixties or whatever it was, uh, and obviously it wasn't going to be too gruesome because of that. You have another series that is literally made for children, um, but now the thing is when you get into the books. I, now I don't know about this specifically with Star Trek. Star Trek I, I I'm not as well knowledgeable about. But when you get into the books in Star Wars and you get into the video games in Star Wars, it can get a lot more dark and gruesome. I don't know if there's ever been an M rated Star Wars game. Um, but it's definitely a lot darker than the than the movies are. That's for sure. Definitely than the cartoons are. Um, and there are people who get like cut in half and stuff like that. Like that's again, like this is just like normal war stuff. I think the, the unique thing about Forty K is that it actually shows the normal horror of wars much more often than a lot of other media does, which just tries to glorify it. And I think part of that is because you know it's, it's this idea of like being in the dim dark, dark the grim darkness of the far future and all of that. Um, now, obviously, there is obviously the over-the-top stuff, like a man being strong enough to rip you in half with his bare hands and stuff like that. But as far as, like, a chainsaw gun going through you or a chainsaw sword going through you versus a lightsaber going through you, um, they're both just realistic depictions of, like, what a sword could do, right? Um, it's just one's got a chainsaw because it looks badass and one's, you know, made of light because it looks futuristic. Franchises, like properties, universes, that you kind of get a feel for oh yeah, this is fucking horrific. And most people faced with that are not going to be like, well, I mean, I could turn and run, or I could keep fighting. You, you get the fuck out real quick. And since you're not part of the Imperial Guard, since you are 
you know, someone from the Federation or from the Galactic Empire, the chances of you being shot in the back of the head by one of your own guys is much lower than if you were fighting on the other side, which in a way makes it all the more tempting to do, I think. Anyway, that was a bit rambly, but you get the idea. I'd be interested if there are any of you out there who, you know, really thrive on this stuff, who do the comparisons yourself, who know, you know, loads more about like those universes and how that kind of thing would affect someone then let me know in the comments because this is just musing out loud it's just a subject i find interesting um but more expertise obviously is always welcome uh yeah let me know if there is any sort of equivalent to the commissar like shooting your own guy in the back of the head whether there's any kind of equivalent weapons that actually means that they wouldn't be that affected by this kind of thing let me know in the comments down below. In the meantime, thank you very much for watching. So, so yeah, when it comes to... Now, I don't know too much about Star Trek, so we'll leave that aside. Um, now, first of all, I agree 100% that the Warhammer universe would win. I think just the scale of it in terms of like the sheer amount of people and the sheer amount of super soldiers when it comes to the Space Marine would be too much for any Star Trek or Star Wars uh, faction to deal with, right? Um, the most powerful faction is probably the Republic out of all of those. Uh, and they just don't have the number of Jedi they would need in order to deal with how many Space Marines are there are. So I think undeniably, you know, the the Space Marines would win. The, the Imperial Man would win. However, I don't think like this. Like I think the idea of like you know war being more gruesome in one universe or another has a lot to just to do with like the media and what they're allowed to portray. Obviously, Warhammer has mostly been you know historically video games and novels, right? They've never, and then obviously the tabletop as well. They've never, until you know, soon they will have a TV show or whatever Henry Cavill's doing it. But they've never had to present it on TV, and they've never had to tone it down. And even now, because it'll probably be on some streaming platform, they'll actually be able to be very, you know, dark and gruesome. Um, whereas you know, Star Trek and Star Wars, Star Wars was literally made for children, so obviously they very much toned down the blood and the gore and all that stuff. Uh, Star Trek was made in, like the fifties or the sixties. Um, so, but the thing is, the horrors of war are always the horrors of war, right? Whether you're getting cut in half from like a physical sword, or you're getting cut in half from a fucking laser sword, or you're getting cut in half from a chainsaw sword, you got cut in half. Um, I don't think the psychological issue would be as much of an issue as he states here. And as for what he was saying with um, you know people killing your own units, obviously you're not going to see that from like the you know the the fe the Federation or whatever it's called in Star Trek, and you're not going to see that from you know the 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 republic with the jedi um but like darth vader does that all the time he literally kills his own men if they fucking like multiple times throughout the movies like force chokes them and shit um and in the, the games the you know the sith do much darker shit to their own people so i agree with his you know his analysis on like who would win i just don't agree a lot on this stuff when it comes to like 40k being the, the the wars in 40k being that much darker i think they just actually portray it more realistically um, you know, it's it's just a much more realistic depiction of war, obviously with all the sci-fi elements and, you know, psychers and all that magical stuff and all that. But, like, aside from that, it's just a much more realistic depiction of war. But anyway, let me know what you think below. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.